Giddy up. With I'm the, on the clock. With the third pick in the FF Dynasty's Rookie Mock It Up Before You Fuck It Up 2019 version. I wasn't telling you to, to, to speed up the, the words. I don't just speed up the telling me <laughs> what we were doing. We're doing it. All right. Mock it up. So, before you fuck it up, well, I don't think I fuck this one up. We can fox together. Um, <laughs> so, I'm picking for practice here. He uh, Another terrible team name. <laughs> he had no chance of winning the 1-1. Not sure how he even got past. I think I think he actually beat me in the in the first round of the playoffs. <laughs> Maybe. No, he might have had a bye. I don't, I don't exactly remember. I really shit the bed the first round of the playoffs. But he's got Deshaun Watson. Um, and Leonard Fournette, and then A.J. Green. And then other than that, his team is pretty depleted of... And by playoffs, you mean the loser bowl. The loser bracket. Right. Well, when, you, when, you have, when you start off with the quarterback in a one-quarterback league, yeah, that's not good. Well, that was that's his prized possession right now because his, his running backs are C.J. Anderson, which he picked up on the waiver wire. Leonard Fournette, which he probably spent a decent amount of money on. Lamar Miller, which... Great he, off season. He may have He may have overpaid for Lamar Miller. Chris Thompson, which... Probably paid too much for him, too. Zach Zenner, which that was a free agent pickup, I'm sure. <laughs> Kelvin Benjamin, which... I'm not sure why he still hasn't won his team. Wills fell off over there. Well, I mean, he had a great offseason. Tyreek Hill could be... I don't, I don't know if he's going <laughs> to... I don't know if he's going to stick around with the Chiefs or not. But the Chiefs roster. He's got Robert Foster, Chris Hogan, d Isaiah McKenzie, which I'm not even... And Tim Patrick. How do you have those guys on your team? Um, Does have AJ Sharp. Green on the IR? Yeah, he has he has AJ Green on the IR, and then MVS, which he had a nice off season because the Packers didn't draft anybody. Um, so he could really use whatever you got. <laughs> <laughs> I'll yeah. have that. Um, I'll he, take two. He might be a candidate for for maybe trade down, but he's he he needs a he needs a good player right here. So and we can't trade. So I'm going to take David Montgomery. Uh, with the one three here in this exercise, we can't trade. He he could trade he, this pick. Yeah, it's not yeah. a league. It's not it's a not, rule of the league. A, it's not a Russian. No league. trading. Yeah. <laughs> it's, not <a> <laughs> it's not a communist league. Yeah. Um, but I'm going to take David Montgomery. He's my favorite running back. I think he's a plug and play guy, ready to roll. Obviously, uh, Josh Jacobs is really good too. Um, but as far as he goes, according to PFF, since they've been doing the PFF college, no other running back has forced more than 100 missed tackles in a season, and David Montgomery's done it twice. Mm-hmm. Mm. Um, so that just kind of speaks to what kind of a player David Montgomery is, in my opinion. Um, there wasn't a great offensive line, hence why he was probably having to do you know, so much. Um, some people say he does too much, which... He definitely does too much at times, which in the next level could be a little bit of a uh, little bit of an issue. But I think it was just out of necessity. Yeah, when you're taking fire, right? You might as well die. When, some when those rounds are live, you gotta <laughs> yeah. you know you gotta make something happen. Um, but he's he's just uh, in my opinion, this guy's a stud. David, Mon- he'll be 22 in the summer. And in, in this summer, he's an Eagle Scout. I mean, come on, who's an Eagle Scout? <laughs> who's an Eagle Scout? <laughs> Um, 5'11", 216, I like that. 71 career uh, total receptions, love that. Um, just refuses to go down. Got a f- physically and kind of mentally, both aspects of, of, of life. Nothing's going to get this guy down. He's going to outwork you. He's going to be first one in, last one out. He's going to work out on weekends. While right. you're out he's hollering gonna, at women, he's out bench pressing. And like, he's getting his teammates in there working right. out too because so it's infectious. They were saying that like he was the culture changer at Iowa State. Like He came in there and really just changed everything that was going on in there. He's an infectious guy, just worked hard, wanted to be really good. Um, this guy's got everything you want. He's got solid hands. He's really he's, good at coming out of the backfield. He can line up in the slot if you need him to. He's ranked number one overall in drop rate. 0.0% drop rate. I don't know if that means he had zero drops, but it sounds like he had zero <laughs> drops. For some reason, PFF won't give you college running back drops. They'll give you wide receiver drops, right? but they'll give you the drop rate percentage. Mm. And he's ranked one. Mm-hmm. Pretty strong stat. So he's pretty, got balance. Pretty, pretty strong. He's got balance. He's got patience. His lateral quickness is off the charts, obviously, with all those evaded tackles. Fourth and elusive rating on PFF. He uh, he can create on it on his own. And I mean, please give him somewhere to go. And the guy will certainly do his own, do his thing. And I think the, the landing spot where, where he ended up for me was awesome. 
Um, I know some people will Chicago. talk about, you know, maybe it's a little crowded over there. Obviously, Mike Davis is there, but I, we talked about it on a Patreon show, I believe, about how the Bears didn't need anything. So mm -hmm. for me, I was kind of in, in camp of you should try to get what you can for Mike Davis because on a team that doesn't really need anything and and who clearly wants to have playmakers on the offensive side of the ball and Jordan Howard getting traded out of there. The writing was, it was on the it wall. Was an easy, it was an easy pick for them to make because their defense is pretty good, because they have weapons everywhere else. And it seemed the one spot where they could maybe use a pick me up. And I feel like they saw this guy hanging around and they said, when he came in for the visit, he left. And then it was like Costanza when he left the clock or hit, hit his uh, thing at somebody's house. So he could come back. He just <laughs> gets in your head. Costanza. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they said, he just grows on you. The guy, you, you just thinking about Mon David Montgomery. Um, just, I think he's going to fit right in, in this offense. Uh, obviously you have Tariq Cohen, which could be a worry for, for some people, but I don't see it taking too much away from what David Montgomery can do last year. You saw Howard have right around 300 snaps, 297. He had 250 attempts, 935 yards, nine touchdowns and 20 for 26. He also had zero drops by the way, Jordan Howard, um, 20 for 26 with the hands and 145 yards and zero TDs. Cohen's not a guy who's going to come in here and take too many handoffs away from what David Montgomery has. Now, will Mike Davis mix in? I'm sure Mike Davis will mix in some. It's not like every team just goes out there and it's only two backs and this is what they do. He's also a rookie. Um, so I, I think Mike Davis will mix in there, but I think they want Montgomery of a guy who they don't have to do any. Like They can leave Montgomery on the field and we can bring Tariq Cohen in and we'll do other things. And every once in a while, maybe we take him off and just put Cohen in there. But I think he's perfect for this offense because he can do everything they want. Like he can he can be your bell cow, and he can be a slot receiver if you need him to be. Like, sure. I love it. Um, I he was my favorite running back coming in. I want to own as much Montgomery as I can own. Uh, I love the landing spot, and I'm all in on David Montgomery. I like it. I like it a lot. I mean, I th you talk about Mike Davis. Obviously, I'm a gamecock. I, I can tell you that Mike Davis is a very versatile running back. They probably cited that when they signed him in free agency, but it's just like two years ago when we said that the Vikings grabbed Latavius Murray in free agency. Like you don't know exactly where you're going to come out with the running with, with, with out of the draft. It was great yeah. insurance, for you the, know, great, for the great insurance bears to pick up Davis is a great, 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 move. great move. That's, and it happened again last year with another team. And we cited Latavius Murray's pick up to the Vikings last that last year before they drafted Dalvin Cook. And, you know, so this is great insurance. They didn't pay him a whole lot, but he's decently paid just because the running backs get nothing anyway. Um, yeah, I'm... Yeah, I mean... Mike Davis... You the Browns took uh, Hyde and then drafted yeah, got, Chubb. Got, that was a similar... Got, hard, got, got Hyde cheap, still paid him a lot for a running back because right. most well, running backs lot, get paid nothing. A lot more than Mike Davis. Everyone was like, well, Mike Davis is going to... He's making a lot of money. It was just $1.3 million. Right. Like, that's, I mean, kickers yeah, make more than that. Yeah, like, I get it. You're, it's a, it's a lot for a running back. That. But at the end of the day, if $1.3 million sitting on your bench for most of the games, you'll nobody be gives all right. a shit. Yeah. <laughs> you'll be all right. Yeah, the caps I, at like a billion, so who yeah. cares? Yeah, exactly. I, I like it. I like, I like the pick when they grabbed Mike Davis. Like, he's a very versatile player. That he can do what they want him to do, what they want out of a running back, but Montgomery does it a lot better. Yeah. A lot better. And so that's, that's, and a, he's cheap as hell. And he's cheap. <laughs> and so that's, I think that's a really good call by what the way you set all that up. And I like the, you know, you, Eagle Scout, contagious, uh, got people to work out over there on a Friday night and Saturday night instead of going out and trying to find some trouble. His offensive you know? coordinator calling the greatest human ever. Right. All the, you know, all that, all that is, 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 is quote extra, yeah. you know, that's right. icing on the cake to, right. to the elusive rating and to the, yeah, the guys missed tackles forced and all that good his stuff. His body bend and elasticity is mm. tremendous. But bring it back over to where he's at on the bears. All right. So they have Tariq Cohen, but Kareem Hunt was doing work with Tyreek Hill on the field. And Cohen is just a running back version of Tyreek Hill in the same offense and the same spread, the way they're going to run it. Obviously, Trubisky's not Mahomes yet, and he may not ever be Mahomes, but 
the and the but like you said, the going into the draft, the Bears didn't have any need. They said they didn't need a running back, and they traded up to get one and made sure that as soon as the I think maybe he, maybe he was picked right after Miles Sanders. Did that happen? The Eagles took Miles Sanders, and then Montgomery was right after uh, it, something it like third, that. He was a third. It was like they bang, traded up for him. Okay, it, it was it was bang bang and a the couple Eagles of, took uh, Miles Sanders at two, the twenty first pick in the second round. Then Daryl Henderson was the third running back off the board. Right uh, at the top of the third. The sixth pick in the third yeah. round. And then three picks later was David Montgomery at 3-9. Okay. All right. Trade yeah. up. I got you. I got you. Yeah, trade up. And and we'll get to the we'll get to the Daryl Henderson, Rams, Todd Gurley stuff because that's a big deal. Um, but I, for the Bears, I love the pick. Like, I think Casey, we were, it was on the Patreon show, but it was, it was really – Casey really hit the nail on the head. They had a very complete roster after the Raiders did him some favors. And – and then also to the to the point there, they you don't have you gave away all your picks for Khalil Mack, and then so you it's not like a luxury pick because you don't really have that many picks. But then you go ahead and put it on Montgomery because you know what you're doing offensively. You have a plan in place, and this guy can can fits your mold exactly. It's going to come right in, and they've welcomed the whole. Everybody's heard this by now, I'm sure. They've welcomed the Kareem Hunt comparisons. Hey, if you want to say this guy's like Kareem Hunt, go ahead. It's cool. That's why we drafted him. So I'm all aboard the David Montgomery train. I said when we when we all fair before we got started, I'd made the Nikhil Harry pick at one two. If that was my team, I'm taking David Montgomery. That's just I'll sign up for a little bit more. Not that I think it's a gamble. I don't, but I think that the solid the the solid asset value that Nikhil Harry gives you, I get that. I'm welcoming more yeah. gamble in my life. I'll take David Montgomery. Right. And I think if it if it booms, it's going to be a really big boom. Right. And we always – that's <laughs> Jay Wayne said it's a running back show. Like yeah. there's only so much boom that a wide receiver can even make to differentiate himself from another good wide receiver in fantasy because there's so many good wide receivers out there. And the more – I, I've been calling this for years, and every year I get, I get more right. The more wide open these offenses get, look at what is about to happen in Arizona. The more wide open these offenses get, the easier it's going to be to come up with two or three wide receivers to start every week, and the harder it's going to be every week to get a running back to start. And with da if David Montgomery hits, he's going to be almost priceless in that offense, the way they spread people out. And if Tariq Cohen is out there running around on the edges, making defensive coordinators, giving them fits, and you got a running back that you can't even tackle, and he can catch, and he can run routes, and he can run up and line up in the slot or pass out wide. Protect. You know, great pass like, protector. I think it's a great pick for the great Bears who protector. already took themselves to the playoffs. Right. And and moving forward in a system that the quarterbacks barely make him do. He he Trubisky crushed it with his legs last year as he was trying to learn this system. Right. And if they go, if he takes a step forward, these Bears are going to be so hard to beat because their defense is nasty and they got playmakers everywhere. Yeah. Great pick for the Bears. Yeah. I mean, the only knock on the guy is that he's the testing wasn't great and he's not super fast and the three cone wasn't great. So I don't really care. He, I don't I, think you ran a three cone. I, I saw what he can do on the field while playing against people. This guy can play, he's ready to go. Um, yeah, he he won't be denied. He's not gonna he's not gonna bust. Like you give him a decent offensive line and a good scheme and a right. and, a, and you a don't man, have, get good decent man game managing quarterback. I'll, just call Trubisky that, um, and and we're ready to go. I think, like I said, two hundred and fifty attempts for Howard last year. I think you could see a little bit more for for uh, David Montgomery right off the rip, and I've, you're gonna see more catches mm -hmm. for sure. Um, so if you could tell yeah, me that I could get three, the field. even if you only get the three hundred snaps that Howard had. If you could tell me my guy's going to get 300 snaps, a chance at some decent touchdowns, and uh, and let's just say 40 catches, I'm in. So for sure, it seems like a no-brainer. I think it's a consensus agreement here at the FF Dynasty. Let's move along.